So where are we at with everything that's going on? Uh, there's so many emotions going on. Uh, we are told to do the social distancing and uh, a lot of people are feeling that this is unnecessary since you know, we're dealing with something that looks more like, like the flu. Uh, the numbers really look, they don't look much different. So you have people thinking that this is, this is bogus, uh, so they wanna gather together. And then you have people that feel that uh, now they're threatening mankind because they're spreading disease. Uh, so there's a lot of emotions going back and forth. Uh, so what I did is that I, I uh, chatted with uh, an epidemiologist, you know, Dr. Knut Witkowski, and he, uh, he's been an epidemiologist for 35 years. He was uh, head of the department over at Rockefeller University uh, in uh, research and development and uh, biostatistics. Uh, so he, he's somebody that really is well versed in the, uh, in the subject. So one of the things that he said is that all these numbers that's coming out, and, and this is kind of surprising to me, you have CDC that are coming out with numbers and you have uh, uh, Fauci you know, coming out with numbers about you know, so many people are gonna die and you know, get two million and now it's, it's less than that and you know, the numbers just kind of keeps going down and down. Um, and you're thinking, well, maybe it's because of the social distancing, maybe that is helping, or maybe it wasn't as bad you know, to start with. So uh, this is what I wanted to ask you know, Dr. Witkowski, and I actually interviewed him on my radio show, which is airing this Sunday at 5 p.m. Uh, on 580 a.m. You know, uh, here locally, uh, KIDO 580 a.m. at 5 p.m. Uh, a little confusing to say all of that. Uh, but it, it was a really fascinating interview and I, I really uh, encourage you to listen to that interview uh, because what he was saying is that uh, there really aren't any numbers that they're basing these statistics on. You know, there, there's no reliable data, uh, there's no proper testing that has been done and in fact uh, what he was saying is that if you looked at the trend uh, that was taking place in China, uh, even also in Italy, you know, because they get, well, not Italy, saying South Korea, actually, uh, China and South Korea, because they were, they were hit before us. And so it took them a while to figure out what was going on. And uh, so by the time that they implemented the uh, social distancing, uh, the curve, they've already hit their peak, which means that the social distancing in those areas really didn't do anything for them. Uh, so if we would have learned anything from what was going on over there, we would have learned that uh, it was gonna hit the peak and then it was gonna decline just on its own. And uh, I was asking, well, these, it, it seems to be a really fast spreading disease and, and it seems like it's very, very scary. Yeah, uh, we're, we're used to the flu every year, but this seems to be, be scarier. And, and he, was, he was really uh, explaining, saying that the way these kind of viruses work is that you first initially have an exponential growth. You know, so you're gonna have a lot of people that get impacted very fast over the first couple of weeks. And then uh, you hit the peak, like the death numbers always follows about a week to two weeks after uh, the infection. So you have the infection rate you know, is, is rapidly increased in the beginning. And then you get the wave then of the death from uh, the infectious agents. And usually it's on the elderly that are impacted, the ones that uh, their immune system is not as strong and you know, the cardiovascular or the respiratory is, is not as good. So they are the ones that are gonna get impacted first. And, uh, and so you, you see the death numbers and about two weeks after that should peak. <clears throat> and as soon as you peaked, and then you start to see the decline, yeah, which, which took place and in China in, and in South Korea, they hit that peak and it already started to decline by the time they implemented the social distancing. And so from his point of view, the social distancing really didn't do anything. It didn't really benefit in anything. And he actually said that they had, the, the way that they dealt with it, it was much better than the way we dealt with it here. So it was that almost like a disadvantage that we had here in the United States that we knew about it ahead of time. Uh, and implemented the social distancing and saying that the social distancing actually was going to prolong 
uh, how the, the infection rate, which means that we're not going to move, move through it as quickly with the social distancing. So I thought that was really, really interesting. And obviously, I'm just saying that this is not you know, my opinion. This is not what, what uh, I figured out. This is somebody who's been doing this for 35 years. And so he, he was concerned that the uh, authorities, you know, the government, really hadn't consulted epidemiologists when they, you know, when they implemented all these uh, uh, different uh, legislative actions, you know, like the social distancing and closing of businesses. And, and in regard to closing of businesses, you know, people losing work, uh, I saw a, a, an article, you know, a study that uh, in, in men's health, actually, uh, better than CNN. Um, <laughs> sorry for going down on CNN. Uh, it's kind of like brainwashing news. Um, so they were saying that they, they're estimating that uh, they're probably the, the rate of suicide will increase you know, by like 45,000 people. You know, just because of the economical impact that this has. So, um, you know, from, from my point of view, you know, listening to him and then also listening to my friend, uh, Dr. Judy Mikovits, you know, she's a virologist. So here we got a, a virologist with 20 years over at Natural Cancer Institute. And here we have uh, an epidemiologist of 20 years, uh, head of department at Rockefeller uh, University. So these are people that know what they're talking about. And from listening to them, it sounds like what we are doing here is probably the worst thing that we can do, the social distancing. You, you want to get over it fast. Uh, you, you want to hit the peak and then move on. And uh, so, so that is, uh, that's, that's what I'm hearing. So I strongly urge you listening, uh, you know, tune in Sunday at 5 p.m. at 5.80 a.m. or also at 107.5 f.m. Uh, it's K-I-D-O. And, uh, and and listen what he has to say. Yeah, it, it really, and he's saying that the numbers really is nothing different than the flu. Yeah, it falls right in line with the flu. You know that we have every year. So he's he's quite fascinated that it uh, uh, that we've taken such drastic actions when we could look at what happened in China and see that it was turning around on its own anyway without the social distancing. So uh, tune in. And uh, if you feel that you need help health-wise, we're here to help you. Uh, we do offer telemedicine. Uh, if you are, uh, yeah, right, right now when we're dealing with the quarantine, you know, uh, even though I may not agree with it, yeah, it's still the verdict, and so we're following it. And uh, so, uh, but do not uh, during this time. It's really important that you take care of your health because there's a lot of stress and a lot of uncertainty and it's important to really support yourself health-wise and, and I want to be here for you.